The light returns. Hooray! Good morning, everybody. It is Friday morning, December 22nd. It is my friend Jackie's birthday today. And I have already been to the co-op, to the feed store, because uh, I had to get diesel for my tractor, because uh, I need to put hay out today. And um, I needed to go and run a couple other errands. And um, I'm also taking care of my neighbor's dogs. They're going to Washington State to see their son um, for the holidays. So I'm taking care of their dogs. So I went and did that this morning. And then I went ahead and just decided I would go ahead and do my town errands while I was out and about and um, get that done. So my plan for today is I need to put hay out. That's hence, hence the diesel. <laughs> but then I also um, need to finish up my edits. I've just got a couple more chapters to go through on my book and then uh, add my biography. Oh know exactly what they want for that, but um, I'll get a, basically I'll just send in an edited, I keep a extended biography on a file and then when I have to submit something for different events, I edit out different, picks out the different relevant parts of it. Um, so then, yeah, so I'm gonna do that. And then my plan after I get that done is to basically work on setting up the area in my den for my bone work uh, because I'm going to put I think I may move my yarn some of my yarn totes in there especially the ones I got from Sandy what I want to do also while I'm off is uh, inventory all my yarn so if I set up that table like I want to in there that would be a perfect place to lay my yarn out and organize it and then get it photographed and put on Ravelry. So I want to do that. Um, and then I guess that's really my only plan for today, I think, is just to kind of, um, I'm still processing the cacao ceremony last night and I'll talk to you a little bit about that um, as I, you know, later in this day, but right now we gotta get this diesel in this tractor and put out hay for these animals. Um, because I have gotten rid of most of my cattle, I'm gonna be just fine on hay, um, I think, because usually by now I'm starting to kind of count how much I've got left and I'm still, look, I'm looking over here at it and I've still got plenty. Um, so, <coughs> that's good. <laughs> um, Joel called me on the way home last night and we talked for a while and then he's got a tooth that's been bothering him so he told me today that he had gotten into the dentist to see about his tooth so um, I, I was just getting concerned that maybe he was getting an infection and you don't that's something you don't want to fool around with but I won um, the raffle to be in Ruby's tarot class I don't know if I shared that with you guys or not my friend ruby is teaching a tarot class based on music there's a deck out and i think it's called the musical tarot or something like that and it's a different musical artists like david bowie and prince and janis joplin and all kinds of different like contemporary more contemporary music artists um and it's but the cards are based on that and so she is teaching a class about that that's going to incorporate the two she's written a lot of articles and and scholarly articles that is presented at conferences on the tarot and in psychology and in journal of american medicine american medical association type stuff um so she's gonna be teaching this class and i had entered a raffle to be in it because it was 150 dollars and while I could have put it on my credit card, I didn't want to. <laughs> so she uh, had a raffle, so I bought three raffle tickets for $30 and I won, yay. <laughs> so anyway, I'll talk to y'all more about the cacao ceremony in a minute, but right now I'm gonna go 
put some hay okay, out. It's time for the tractor starting lottery. What are we going to have today? A battery that starts it or a battery that needs on the charger? <laughs> it's always fun this time of year to see what you get. So, uh, okay. So I turned on all the heaters in the house and I'm letting them warm up while I'm out here um, starting the tractor. So let's see what we got. <laughs> fancy i got me a yoga mat bag and a cushion a meditation cushion which i could have really used last night to be honest sitting on that floor was rough but anyway so guess i'm gonna have to keep up my practice of going and doing more yoga huh i got me a little table area set up here i've still got to uh finish cleaning out the sweeping out and then i've got to figure out how to store stuff in here but we're making progress, yay! Look at this cool Christmas card I got today from Cheryl. I think she made this. It's beautiful, look at the deer. I love those deer. Those are amazing. Thank you, Cheryl, I love this card. I think once the holiday's over, I may repurpose it into something. Anyway, we'll see. Um, I am headed out to uh, Russellville to meet Melissa. I have been cleaning house since I got back from the feed store and um, I need a break. So she said she was coming to Russellville to pick up something for one of her clients. She's a massage therapist and um, she's headed to pick up something for one of her clients from her friend, Tanya. And so we are gonna meet up and do some girl shopping. I'm starting at Lowe's <laughs> in the tools. Uh, that's my kind of girl shopping. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to meet up with, with her. Um, Joel got back from the dentist. He is going to have to have that tooth pulled. I was figuring he would probably would. And as I suspected, it was infected. So he has to take antibiotics. And he can't have it pulled until he's finished his course of antibiotics. Um, but, so I'm, but I'm glad that he's going to get some relief from that tooth. Because I know it, it has been pain him. It had been bothering just a little bit off and on. And then this week, apparently, uh, I know Monday night, it started hurting like pretty seriously. And then pretty much all day Tuesday, it was hurting. And even like uh, Orgel and Ambisol were not giving any relief. So I feared it was getting infected. So uh, he got into his dentist today and they looked at it. So. That's good news that he's gonna get that fixed. So, but anyway, so I got the bone area set up um, and, or well, not set up, but I got it cleaned out. And the first thing I'm gonna do before I start bringing all the bone stuff in there is use that area to catalog my yarn. Uh, you know, Jessica is giving me a bunch of beautiful yarn. Shirley's giving me a bunch of beautiful yarn. I got a bunch of beautiful yarn from Sandy and none of it has been cataloged and put in my Ravelry stash. So I think I want to do that first. Um, I've got most of the day tomorrow. I am going tomorrow night to the Lucky Bella anniversary party, but um, I won't need to leave to do that until like six o'clock or five o'clock. Um, and so I've got most of the day tomorrow too to work on things. And then I don't know what's happening Christmas Day now. Things are kind of up in the air with the weather and such. So I'm probably, I don't know what's happening. But um, when I get home tonight, I'm probably going to start cataloging yarn. And in the morning, now that I've got that space cleared out, I can also sit there with my laptop and work, which will be another advantage. Um, because I bought a little heater I bought a big heater to put in that room for when I'm home, I can turn it on so the dogs have some heat because they like all their beds are in there and they like to lay in there, um, except at night, they like to be in the bedroom with me. But during the day, most of them camp out in the den. And so I have that heater, the big heater in there for them, which is contained. It's no way they can get burned or turn it over or hurt themselves. But I bought a little like workshop heater so if it gets really cold, I can have it by my feet or next to me in my little corner 
where I'm working on bone work. Because that part of the house tends to be the coldest in the winter anyway because it's farthest from the heating unit. Assuming I had a heating unit that was working. But we're not going to go there. Um, but anyway, so I got that area set up. Um, so I'm pretty proud of that. And then um, another thing that occurred to me, I was... And, and the cacao thing has brought, you know, it's starting to bring some things to, to light for me. Um, I walked past my bookshelves today, and I got to thinking about bookshelves. And the word that came up for me in the cacao ceremony was security. And one of the things that, to me, the security means is, is having my parents care for me now granted they did what they could with the tools they had I'm not blaming them but they still did not give me the security that I needed as a child like we were not an affectionate family we were not a loving family the only emotions that got expressed generally were anger or disappointment or aggravation <laughs> we were not a demonstrative family I am my mother was that way I think she wanted to be that way but when you live with people who are like that you kind of lose that ability so I think you know I'm not saying that I'm not making excuses for them but I understand the reasons right um, and part of breaking these generational cycles, although I don't have children, I'm doing this for me and my spiritual children, I guess, and my academic children or whatever, you know, um, bookshelves are a big deal to me. When I was a little girl, we, there were no kids that lived around where I lived, so I was raised like a small old person. I was expected to be a tiny adult from the time that I can remember. There was no childishness. There was no carefreeness so books were my escape and I and even though we were pretty poor the library was free and in the summertime we had to go to town to do the laundry because we didn't have a washer and dryer that worked and and I never understood that we had a dryer but there was something wrong with it I think it probably just needed some sort of inexpensive fix but there's this whole trauma thing bound up with that house and my dad's dead first wife and just I don't I don't even know I have my I have my ideas that it was just trauma for him but we had a washer and dryer but they weren't we were not able to use them so um we went to the laundromat in the summertime we went once a week and after the laundry we would go to the library we would get to go to the library now if we went to the other laundromat which was down at the little country store sometimes the bookmobile would come by but in any case there were books there were books i was able to get books and then my mom if you remember book orders <laughs> the, the the book orders forms the weekly readers or whatever they were called uh, she managed to buy me some books always from those I may not have gotten everything that I wanted but I was able to pick out two or three books every month or every couple months however often that they happened and um, get them and I still have all those books y'all I still have them all okay I've got all of my weekly reader books I've got all the books that I bought from the book orders I've got them all somewhere in this house I mean, a lot of them as I finally start unpacking boxes and things I find them but anyway so book orders got books and then I was always a voracious reader where there was a used bookstore where you could trade in books and get credits and get other books so it was like a trading system I mean that you always had to spend a little bit of money to get because they wouldn't have stayed open very long if not but anyway so I got books and the one thing I asked for from the time I could remember was I wanted a bookshelf. Didn't have to be fancy. Didn't have to be anything extravagant. I just wanted a bookshelf. I wanted it. I would have been happy if I had had some plywood on concrete blocks. As long as I'd had a shelf to put my books on. That's what I wanted. And I asked for it probably every single Christmas and every single birthday. I wanted a bookshelf. And I never got one. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff balled up with 
our stuff and when we had to move in with my grandparents because my dad let the house get to the point that it became unlivable and we weren't allowed to take things and so we had to leave things in the house and then people would come and steal them. You know, and these are things that you might have wanted to pass on to children like my little Easter dresses and my Fisher Price toys and, and things like that. You know, they were in that house and we weren't allowed to bring them to my grandmother's because it was her house and we were going to junk her house up with a bunch of stuff. And that's the house I live in now. So there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> but the first thing that I got to thinking about was these bookshelves and how I wanted these bookshelves and I never got them. So one of the first things I did for myself when I bought that house was I went to the furniture store and I ordered me six bookshelves and filled them up. And my dad, of course, had a lot to say about that because he doesn't read. He wasn't a reader and he didn't see the value in having books. My dad would have been happy with a refrigerator, a recliner, a microwave, and a television as long as the TV had a remote. That's all that man needed. <laughs> and, you know, that's that was his way, but it was not my way, and I wanted books. So, but anyway, so that was a realization that I made today about how things, when your children ask for things, even if it seems trivial, and it wasn't like I was asking for something really expensive. I knew better. I mean, I knew I wasn't going to get, you know, the fancy doll or the Barbie dream house, which I didn't really want anyway, or whatever. I wasn't going to get those things because we simply didn't have the money. Um, but my dad could have made me some bookshelves. He had the ability to do that, and he just never did. And so there's a lot of stuff packed up in that realization. But what it revolves around is security. And during the meditation, one of the images that came to me I was telling Joel about this last night, was my, my adult self as I am now and my little self, probably four or five years old. And you know how a parent will pick up a child and they'll swing them around, like they'll spin around and swing them around and the kid laughs, you can hear the kid laughing. And, and that kid knows that they're safe. They know that their parent is not gonna let go of them. And that joy that bubbles out of them in that moment um, is because they're secure. It's because they're safe. And of course, my parents never did that to me, obviously. But um, I don't. They were. I don't think they were physically capable of it because they were older when they had me. But but that that sensation of feeling secure and being able to just exude that joy that's important to me so that's I was thinking about that image of myself nurturing my little self nurturing that inner child or that younger self and that's part of what this heart opening needs to have to happen is me providing myself that security so that's my deep thought realization today. Well, Lowe's had their storage containers on sale, if you don't mind red and green ones, which I don't mind that a bit. And they have these big rolled paper towels on sale too, so yay for Lowe's. Ooh, I remember why I don't come to this town around Christmas time. The traffic in this town is freaking nuts. These people don't drive worth a sh You know, honey, um, we're trying to let you turn. For example, people in this town drive like they ain't got no sense. Um, there was probably a half a mile long line of both directions of people trying to turn into Walmart. Thank heavens I had no need to go to Walmart today. I met Melissa up here today um, and we went to, uh, I went to Lowe's and then she wanted to go to the local big box craft store and pet yarn. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that. Uh, now we're going to go get a little bite to eat over here at this little Mexican place. I've not been to this particular one. There's another one of the same place on the other side of town that I've been to. But this is actually on the way home for me. So this works out perfect. Because it'll get me out of this traffic. Ah! <laughs> little Rock traffic. Those people are used to driving in traffic. So they got some sense. People in this town. This is Russellville. 
they're not used to driving in traffic, so they drive like fools. And they're making me want to cuss a bunch. <laughs> Yay. So I'm home. I ended up having a little early dinner with Melissa because she'd had a bad client day. She's a massage therapist. And when you work for yourself, people try to kind of take advantage, especially if they're people who are known in the community. They kind of try to take advantage of you and sometimes. And that is what happened to her today. And she was just needing to talk about it. So we walked around and talked and then we went and had dinner and it was lovely. Um good support system that I have. I'm very grateful for that. I'm grateful that I can be, I hope, a support to them also. So I am actually sitting at my new work table. I wanted to check the height and I got the height right for me. I like this height. Um, what I'm going to do tonight is start cataloging yarn. I bought a bunch of storage solutions for when I start moving my bone work in here to store like my Dremel and my wood burning stuff in and my uh, little bits and pieces, um, and um, that way I'll have it all here and I can get to it. I'm not having to dig through stuff and look for it. That's the biggest thing that I get in trouble with in my regular craft room is what I want is always underneath, behind, on the other side of something, and then I have to dig through it and it makes a big mess. So that's one reason why I wanted a separate area for the bone work. And um, the other thing is um, that way, since I'm gonna try to do this sort of as a little bit of a side hustle business, I wanna be very clear about what I'm using for and what I'm consuming so I can keep a track, track of it for my taxes. So I took a page out of uh, Joel and the Sticks and Stones book about some of the stuff that I bought. Uh, and then I bought some other things too. So. I'm not bringing that in tonight. I want to get this yarn cataloged, but what I'll do at some point, it may not be during haul of vlog, but uh, at some point y'all will get to see the video of what I've got set up. So, yay. So right now I'm going to see who wants to get online on my Zoom room and keep me company while I catalog yarn. Yay. What are you doing? Are you literally playing with the broom handle? Okay. I plan to be a lot more organized than this, but that was not to be. But I'm semi-organized, so I've got a bin here that's going to be hats. Um, it's, I'm going to be doing a hat knit along next year on the podcast for our warming tree. So this is all things that I could use to make hats that don't necessarily have to be hand washed. Then I've got one that's got some other miscellaneous wool in it. And then I've got some Karen cakes and some other things down here. So not super organized, <laughs> but I'm trying to at least get things semi-grouped together. Um, but it's a slow process, uploading photos and everything to Ravelry. So, but we're making progress. Well, I got done cataloging all of Sandy's yarn. There's a few, there's some that I don't know what it is because it didn't have tags. And there's small bits and pieces left. So I'm going to keep that in my bag that I use for stuffing, like toys and stuff. Uh, and another thing that I got was some linen. I think it's probably for like an embroidery machine, but I am not sure. I got a whole bunch of these cones. And I think, I don't know, this has got sparkly stuff in it. And then I know for sure this is linen. So I don't know if this is for weaving or what, but uh, it's Lust Lucy's Linen, traditional, tradition and trend. And uh, I've got a bunch of these cones. So I don't know what they're for. If y'all know what they're for, let me know. But um, I got several of those and um, and there's just a bunch of, you know, random bits of yarn down in here that I'll probably just put in my stuffing bag uh, for things. But I got everything else um, in these totes. I got that all photographed and cataloged and uploaded to Ravelry. So I feel quite accomplished. Um, yeah, so that was a 
evening spent watching Taskmaster and um, doing that. So, yay. Okay, let's do our Divine Masters cards. Uh, I did the uh, Angels and Auras deck yesterday, so I'm going to do the Divine Masters today. So, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and go through Christmas Day because it looks like the weather is going to agree with us and we'll be able to go up to Petty Jean and so I'll get some footage of that. I might even go through the 26th because we're going to the circus on the 26th. There's an old-fashioned circus with aerialists and horses and stuff that winters not too far from here. And they have Christmas programs. And I bought tickets for Joel and I to go. So I might go ahead and go through then just so you guys can see um, the circus. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, so today's Divine Masters, the first one is Guru Ram Das. Uh, and he's the one that says we are all just walking each other home, which I love that. Uh, Guru Ram Das was the fourth of the Gurus of the Sikhs, serving from 1574 until 1581. Born as Jetha in Lahore, he was orphaned at seven and raised by his maternal grandmother. When he was 12, they moved to the city of Go Gonval, where they met Guru Am Amar Das. Feeling a deep calling from within, Jetha took him as a mentor and a teacher and later married his daughter. Instead of choosing one of his own sons as successor, Guru Amar Das chose Jetha and renamed him Ram Das, servant of God. Um, even though, okay, he was the founder of the holy city of Amritsar, sacred to the Sikhs. Even though there was a lot of unrest at the time, through selfless service and conviction, he and his devotees were able to pacify and restore this holy land. Thus, his energy helps makes the impossible possible. Uh, the fifth to tenth Sikh gurus were all direct descendants of Guru Ram Das. The blessings of Guru Ram Das are with you now. Even if the odds are stacked against you, you are being guided to expect miracles. Um, don't allow anyone or anything to stand between you and your dreams. By staying committed to your vision, you allow what may seem impossible to be possible. If you feel the miracle that you need is too huge to achieve, then you must know that you are only limited by your mind. Don't measure what seems possible. Just trust and let miracles become your reality. Okay. The next one is Rama and Sita, Holy Union, Soulmate Connection, Romantic Opportunity. They are the Hindu personifications of the divine masculine and feminine and are associated with the Festival of Light, Diwali. Embodiments of divine love and holy union, this magical couple can be invoked for help with overcoming challenges in relationships and can help those who are ready to open their heart to love. Rama and Sita are the central figures in the Indian epic, the Ramayana. In short, the story is that Rama and Sita were royal rulers and a great demon lured Sita away by impersonating a wounded animal and an injured beggar in the forest. Uh, as Sita had great compassion, she fell into a trap and was stolen away from her one true love. On his quest to find her, Rama led an army of monkey warriors, including its leader, Han Hanuman, uh, into a battle between good and evil. They prevailed, and the royal couple were united once more, and their coming together is still celebrated today. You have a great ex opportunity to experience heart healing at this time. In the past, you may have found it difficult to trust and let yourself be loved, and therefore had many barriers up that stopped others from seeing your true worth. Now you find yourself in an empowered position where you are open to the possibility of partnership. If you aren't in a relationship, the universe is presenting opportunities for you to experience a really a real soul-to-soul -soul connection. This can only happen, though, if you stop letting past experiences cloud your judgment in the present. If you are already in a relationship, there is an opportunity to take it further at this time. Either way, enjoy the experience. Okay. Rumi. Rumi is mystical knowing, breaking boundary, personal experiences of the divine. Rumi was a 13th century Persian mystic poet. His words, poems, and songs have been highly influential the world over, transcending national borders and ethnic divisions and describing a direct experience with divine. Rumi is now acknowledged as the world's most popular poet. What's most magical about this great man is his ability to shed light on moments can be deeply painful. In these moments, his words and poems can bring real solace. One of his most loved phrases is, the wound is where the light enters. For it shows that even in our dark, most wounded moments, the divine will be there to lead us back to wholeness. It is time to move beyond any limitations of the earthly realm that have been placed or forced upon you. It is time to break free of the constraints of family, politics, religion, and anything else has been telling you who you are or how you need to be. Your connection to the divine must come from personal experience. 
trust what you believe and trust what you know, for this is the only way to move forward. This isn't saying you should disrespect or throw away what may be in place around you, but if there's a way for you to authentically express yourself, for you to, there, there, see if there's a way to authentically express yourself without causing offense. Simply remain centered in your heart and let your personal experience of the divine lead the way. It isn't inauthentic to speak to others in their language or through their wording in order to get your point across. What is important is what you feel within and the deep knowing that no matter who you are or where you are, you are loved by the power that created you. And the last one we'll do is St. Germain, the Violet Flame. Alchemy, alchemy, release the old, make way for the new. The Count of St. Germain was an 18th century European adventurer and alchemist. During his life on Earth, it is said he rubbed shoulders with some of the most elite members of European society, but his background was shrouded in mystery. He was acknowledged to be a man of miracles because he was a noted alchemist and magician who apparently never aged. He claimed to be over 500 years old, though this is most likely a joke. He was known for giving public demonstrations of magic illusions and telepathy and was probably a member of the Rosicrucian order. Rumor has it that even, even though he moved in highly influential circles, he probably felt like an outsider because of his upbringing. Thus, from the heavenly realms, he will help those who call on him to find their place in the world. He's also associated with a spiritual energy called the violet flame, which you can be aided in, which can aid, which can be invoked to aid transformation. You are in a powerful vortex of transmutation and change. The violet flame is transforming, of transformation is within you, and all that has felt heavy, overwhelming, and dark is being transformed into opportunities for growth and freedom. Past dramas and traumas are now being cleared from your energy. If you are concerned about how to move forward, know that willingness is enough and the universe will take care of the rest. Cool. Very good. Yes. I think that uh, that's important that um, you learn to release. Release, release, release is what Kathy said my guys were saying the other day. So that's it for, well, hello, Simon. That's it for today. And I will see you guys tomorrow.